Good morning, rock stars. Welcome to Spring and Story. My name is Holly Ann Knight, and it's my job to guide you to quilt with confidence. Guys, today we're going to talk about posture and ergonomics for free motion quilting. So, as you are joining me live, please say hi in the comments so that I can see you. I'm going to get this video pulled up over here on my laptop so that I can greet you as you are joining me. Um, and I want to extend an extra special welcome to the many of you that this might be your first Tuesday mini workshop with me. We have a lot of new faces here on String and Story, and I'm so excited that you're joining us. So like I said, as you're hopping on, say hi in the comments. I'm going to pull this video up, and you guys are going to notice this, you know what? This romper is not flattering uh, when I am sitting and facing the camera like that. That's kind of unfortunate. It's got a weird bubble in it, guys. But we're going to go with it because, guys, today we're talking about posture. So I'm sitting here on my favorite stool, but we're going to talk and look at some other chairs that I have as well because my goal by the end of today is for you guys to be able to pursue free motion quilting free from physical pain at least as far as we can control it, right? We all have injuries or issues that can make it difficult to have a truly pain-free quilting experience, but there are things that we can do to significantly reduce the risk of pain and discomfort, okay? Alrighty, let me, now I'm all self-conscious about my romper, guys, real life. I see you guys hopping on, hello, hello. Good morning, Helen, good morning, Diana, good morning, or Diane, good morning, Sue, Linda, Karen, Kathy, Marie, Renee, I'm missing some of you guys, Terry, Rhoda, Lisa, Francie Joe, welcome, welcome. Okay, let's hit some basics. First things you need to know, if you are new here at String & Story, I am live here on the String & Story Facebook page every Tuesday morning at 11 a.m. Eastern. This is our mini workshop for the week. Now, some of you have seen some of my other videos and you know I'm normally sitting over there. You are getting a very honest view of my sewing room right now with all the kind of bits and bobs of clutter. I really should have moved the trash can from the background. Let's do that. That's going to bother me. But I show up with my messy sewing room clutter because this is real life. This is real sewing. And we want to talk about real life solutions to some of our sewing problems, including shoulder, neck, wrist, elbow, neck pain. Okay? So, as I mentioned, lovely, lovely. I see all you guys hopping on. Um, as I mentioned, I'm here live every Tuesday morning, and always remember to check the links in the caption of this video. So today there are two links. I'm going to mention them real quick. We're going to jump into the teaching that I have for you guys today, and then we'll recap them at the end. So first of all, in the link, the first link in the caption of this video is a link to a blog all about posture and ergonomics. It also includes links to a couple other blogs related to this, right? So if you want to go beyond what we talk about today, then you'll click over there and you can read more and get some pictures, tips, links, etc. Okay. The second link you're going to find in the caption of this video is a sign up link for the free motion quilting launch pad. Those of you who have been around String and Story for a hot second know that this month is all about free motion quilting because Free Motion Quilting Academy is coming back at the end of the month. The launch pad is designed to be a jump start for your free motion quilting journey. Before I ever ask you to join me inside the Academy, I want you to have a chance to learn and have some success with me and also to overcome some of your fears around free motion quilting. So launch pad is going to be the perfect jump start for that experience. It's a free online event. It starts next week. And as I mentioned, there's a sign up link in the caption of this video. Now, let's talk about sewing and sewing without pain and discomfort, all right? Now, if you go look at today's blog post, you will notice that I took all of my pictures over on my Juki. But when I was reviewing it last night, making sure that I included everything that I wanted to show you guys, I realized one very important problem. Many of you are not going to be sewing on a large industrial machine set into a table, right? Many of you are going to be sewing on a smaller domestic machine sitting on top of a table. And so I wanted to do today's demo talking through some of the challenges that are going to be more unique to that situation. Um, the unique is not in fact the right word because y'all are in the majority, right? So I want to make sure that you have your questions answered. So as we are going along, uh, drop any questions you have in the comments of this video. I'll be trying to keep my eye on them as they scroll by. And then I'll also make sure that I take questions at the end, okay? Now, there's a few things you want to think about when it comes to posture. First of all, the body favors right angles or near right angles. So a nice gentle L in your arms or in your knees or slightly wider than that. Getting tighter tends to cause strain on your joints, okay? 
The second thing is that your body likes to be stacked on top of itself. So your shoulders over your hips, right? If we're standing up, then our hips are also over our knees, knees over ankles, right? So having that nice, tall, stacked up posture, thinking of your spine like a string of pearls, not like stiff and plank-like, but embracing its natural curves and keeping, like I said, those hips over shoulders, all right? When we sew, very often, our table is very high, and our hands end up like this, and we stick our neck out forward, okay? That's gonna cause pain along the back of the neck, it's gonna cause strain in the elbows, wrists, and fingers, and it's gonna cause pain in the lower back. You see how crunched up I am here? This is not a flattering or a safe position. You will, in fact, injure yourself, okay? I was lazy about this for a very long time. I didn't know better, hadn't learned better, right? And um, I started seeing a new chiropractor, and you can read about the story on the blog. But basically, the first thing he asked me was like, what do you do on the weekends? Play rugby? Like, I had done so much damage to my joints from holding a poor position that I literally looked like I had sports injuries. What? Right? That just seems crazy, but it's true. All right? So if you have been trying to free motion quilt or quilt or piece or do anything, and you're experiencing pain because of poor posture, uh, let this be my friendly encouragement to you to change. The good news is that you can learn to sew pain-free, and I now no longer have symptoms of those injuries, right? My body's had the opportunity to heal. So when we're setting up, let me show you guys this. I pulled a couple of other chairs in, right? Often, we are sewing at a dining room table. And when we're sewing at a dining room table, we might be sitting in a chair a little bit more like this, right? Now we're used to lounging back, in a chair like this. This chair is also low so that the table is pretty high on our body and the idea there is when you're eating that the food does not fall in your lap. This is good. This is well designed, right? Unless we're wanting to sew on this same table. Now, I'm going to have a little bit of a limitation as I'm demonstrating for you guys because there is a bar under this table, but I'm going to do the best I can. All right? So what I want you guys to see here first is that this table is way up on my rib cage, right? It is high. It is like almost at the bottom of my sternum, right? This is high on my rib cage, so in relation to my body, it's a high space, all right? So when I put my arms up to sew, my arm is immediately at a tight angle, an acute angle. This is already gonna be causing strain. And then in order to maneuver a quilt, especially a heavy quilt, the elbow grease factor is gonna be high. It's gonna take even more work than it needs to take, and in order to really get our body in there, I'm going to be crunching in my shoulders, I'm going to be leaning forward, I'm going to be straining, right? Because all of these angles are inefficient, okay? You have a couple of options if you're sewing at a dining room table, right? One option is to do something like what I did, of having um, a stool that I can raise up, right? Um, another option is to look for another table. Third option would be sew at something like a counter where you can stand. You're going to have to get creative if you're sewing on that dining room space. But the biggest and easiest solution is going to be to change what you're sitting on. All right? So swap out that dining room chair. Hello, Amy. I'm glad to hear that it's sunny in England. Swap out that dining room chair for something taller. Now, an office chair is going to be a little bit better, right? A little bit more ergonomic. I can put a pillow in the back of it to push me forward, right? If you're sitting forward in a chair, but like if I'm sitting back, right, this throws me back onto my tailbone. Notice the way that my abdomen curves in on itself. There's no strength in this position, right? This is a weak position. Sitting up, this is why I have a pillow on this chair, because it reminds me to sit forward on my sit bones. Sitting forward is gonna put your body in a position of strength. So already, because this chair is flatter, it's a little less designed for lounging back in, it's gonna be a little bit better, but I still have a pretty acute angle here. And what's hard to see under the table is that I've got a hard right angle going with my knee that is gonna make it difficult to control the foot pedal effectively, right? I want a gentler angle down there that even though I'm close to that desired kind of space, it's still gonna be just enough that it's gonna be hard on my ankle to control the foot pedal in order to get accurate stitches. So stuff in the right direction, but still not great. Um, if your only options are an office chair or a dining room chair, sit on a pillow, right? Raise yourself up. See how much better that is already? I've significantly improved the angle in my elbows. I've also extended that angle in my knee a little bit that makes it easier for my ankle to move so that I can work and have even stitches and have a better 
posture as I'm quilting. All right, so sit on a book, sit on a pillow. My personal preference though is just simply to get a taller chair. It might be a saddle stool like this, it might be a chair, it could be a drafting stool. There's a lot of options, but let me talk you through what's going to happen ideally, okay? So ideally, when we're quilting, in order to reduce strain in all of these areas, I want you sitting up tall on your sit bones, right? We think of like sitting on our bums, but if you actually sit on your large gluteal muscles, then you're sitting back like this on your tailbone. Now, friendly reminder, the tailbone is where the end of your spinal cord is. So you're sitting on nerves that are not meant to be sat upon, right? That's gonna cause all sorts of nerve pain. It can cause numbness in your legs, all issues with circulation, etc. okay? So we don't wanna sit back like this. We wanna actually sit up. If you look at the human pelvis, you know, we've got these big pelvic wings. That's when we put our hands on our hips, right? And then there's essentially smaller bits underneath that there's literally two little bones that are round at the bottom that are designed to sit on. They're called the ichial tuberosities, more commonly known as the sit bones. This is when you've got a kid sitting on your lap and you're like, oh my gosh, you have a bony butt. It's literally because they're lean and you can feel the bottom of their pelvis on your leg. Okay, sit on those. That's what they're designed for. All right, so we want to be sitting up on our sit bones. We've got a gentle, slightly wider than 90 degree angle through our hips and knees. So nice gentle angles that are good for circulation. They also keep good mobility for maintaining an even pressure on your foot pedal, all right? I've got my hips and my shoulders stacked and I want my head stacked over my shoulders. This, guys, is the hardest part, right? Because all of these angles, including the elbows, I've basically fixed simply by extending the height of my chair, right? I've raised this stool up a little bit. So if I even had it down here, it'd be a little bit low. I've raised it up just a little, so stack up your pillows, whatever you need to do. But this part is where you have to build a habit. A habit of good posture that when you're sewing, you trust your eyeballs. Now, I am minus eight in this eye. I am minus eight and a half in this eye. By taking off my glasses, I can no longer see the camera, right? I do not have good eyesight. There are many people in the world who have worse eyesight than me, but I mention that to you because I, like many of you who have eyesight that rather, whether from age or from genetics, is less than ideal, it's incredibly important to have good light when you're sewing. Now, you can see this light here a little bit, right? Normally it's over my sewing machine because one of the ways that I can keep my head up and trust my eyeballs to do the work to measure depth, to measure distance, to tell my hands where to be in relationship to the needle is by having excellent light. So get yourself a high quality LED that can be quite affordable. It's gonna be worth that investment, okay? So, so far today, what we have talked about in terms of needs, if you are someone who is sewing with a typical domestic machine on top of a table, you wanna make sure that your seat is tall enough and you wanna make sure that you have enough light so that you can stack your head over your shoulders, your shoulders over your hips, have a gentle 90 degree angle at your elbows, hips, and knees in order to maintain good sewing posture. You're gonna hold this position. This is not a normal position for many of us, right? You're gonna hold this position by engaging your core. So the front of your abdominals, you'll feel them flex a little bit, and the same in the back, you'll feel these muscles flex. As you're sewing, you will find it first this feels very good. I am no longer straining my neck out. I'm not experiencing the same pain, etc. But you will get tired, right? And I mentioned that because if you're going to be sewing with excellent posture, you will not be sewing for as long of a stretch of time without a break, okay? So I recommend taking breaks every 15 to 20 minutes. Um, get up, move your body, kind of shake it out, drink some water. Remember how I told you that my chiropractor thought that I had rugby injuries, right? As silly and funny as that is, it's a good reminder to us that quilting is its own form of exercise. Sitting with an upright posture like this is not something that's natural to many of us. This is a workout. Treat it as such. Hydrate your body. Take breaks. Stretch. Okay? Now, I have thrown a ton of information at you guys about posture, about lighting, about moving your body around, and I'm going to assume that it has created some questions. Because, as you may have been able to tell, this is a topic I'm passionate about, hence why I just monologued about it for almost 20 minutes, right? 
But I want to take a moment, and if you have questions about this, if you have questions about your sewing setup, please drop them in the comments. I've got a few minutes and I want to answer them for you. I want to help you get set up for success, especially for those of you who are jumping into the launch pad next week. Because we have six days until launch pad starts. And I want you to be able to go into it confidently knowing that you have a good setup. While you guys are typing, there's a couple more things I want to talk about with machines. I hope you're noticing that this is not a large machine. This is the sewing machine that I quilted on for three years. This is the sewing machine that I began teaching Free Motion Quilting Academy on. You will see this sewing machine in some of the Free Motion Quilting Academy videos even now because I have quilted up to double size bed quilts on this machine, okay? And I want you to understand that it's very possible. Whatever machine you have at home, we talked about this last week, we talked about supplies and machines for free motion quilting. Go back and find that video if you weren't here with me. Um, but whatever machine you have, whether you have it set down into a table, whether you're sitting up at your dining room table, that's exactly where you should begin, right? That's exactly why we're having these videos and this education for you because I want you to know how to work with what you have, right? Maybe you do want to go out and get a stool, but like I showed you, you literally can just sit on a pillow right, and raise yourself up. So we're going to be scrappy, both maybe in our quilting and also in our setup, so that you can succeed. That is my number one goal is for you to find success at free motion quilting. All right, let's see. Amy says, since sitting on some cushions at the dining table, I found it much easier um, to be quilting in a not tense position. I love that, Amy. The other nice thing about um, sitting on some cushions or some pillows, especially if you're in something like a dining room chair, is it allows you to sit at the edge of your seat without cutting off the circulation at the back of your thigh, right? Let me show you this. So if you are sitting in a dining room chair and you sit way up like this, you will find over time that you're kind of hitting the back of that blood vessel with the edge of the chair and it'll get kind of numb after a while. It's not super great. And so putting a cushion there as well helps improve circulation. That's the other reason that we want to make sure that we're getting up and moving around frequently. Um, is to help keep good circulation in our legs. Because anytime you're sitting, no matter how good your posture is, there's reduced circulation to your legs. Let's see, Trina says, I have to be higher on the machine for the arm angle, but then I can't see behind my needle. Should I sit for arm ease or so I can see what I'm doing? So when I'm sitting here, I cannot see behind my needle. Trina, the way I get around this is there's a couple of things that I do. First of all, I make sure that I've thoroughly, this is such a good question, I'm so glad you asked this. Um, I make sure I've thoroughly doodled out what I'm going to be quilting before I begin so that I have a, a strong awareness of where motifs and my piecing are going to be intersecting, overlapping, etc. Number two, don't be afraid to pause frequently and do one of two things. So this is kind of number two, A and B. So A, don't be afraid to turn the quilt a lot so that you can see better what you're doing, especially because you're likely going to be lighting from the front, etc. Um, but I know that that's not super practical if you're working on a large quilt. So what I would recommend instead is as you're going along, as you're quilting, stop frequently and intentionally look. Where am I, right? It's, this is the tricky thing. It's like this is your neutral position, right? This is where we want our default to be. But if you're quilting along and you need to take a quick peek, that's totally fine. That's why our bodies move, right? But I would encourage you to consider stopping while you do that so you don't end up being like, eh, let me just keep going away from myself and holding a bad posture, right? So it's, it's one thing to pause and kind of check where you're at and then resume. Uh, just don't let this become your default. Hopefully that helps. Let me know. Hello, Sharon. I'm so glad you're here. Any other questions I can answer for you guys? I want to recognize that for those of you who are new here at String and Story, this probably feels like a lot of new information. Um, please make sure that you're jumping into the Quilting Rockstars Facebook group. There are many, many rockstars who have been here at String and Story for months and even years who have heard me talk about this subject ad nauseum and they've made a lot of adjustments of their own for their sewing setups. I'm very fortunate that I tend to work with a bit of an ideal setup, right? Because I do this professionally, etc. But for some of you, you're like, Holly, and I'm just getting started. I want to check out this free motion quilting thing before I put too much into optimizing my space. And I completely support you in that. So if you are looking for specific recommendations beyond what maybe we've answered today, don't hesitate to jump into the Quilting Rockstars group. Post a picture of your sewing space. Post a picture of yourself sitting and be like, 
help, help me problem solve how to make this better, right? You may not be ready to get yourself an LED light that you can bend the snake arm down where you see, but maybe you can move a lamp over and set it next to your quilting, right? That's gonna be a big deal. Uh, let's see, would tipping the sewing machine, so Maria, I would be very hesitant to do anything that would tip a sewing machine you don't want it to flip over while you're quilting, and you don't want to mess up the balance of things inside. That'll mess up your tension and all kinds of things. So I would just pause, yeah, and like check what you need to do. Meredith says, I have a large machine and a relatively high desk. It ends up just below shoulder height, so they're not sure there's an easy fix. What do you think? Um, Meredith, I would go down to um, like a Goodwill and maybe look for like a bar stool. You know those like wooden bar stools on four legs? And my guess is that it'll be a little high and I would measure and I would literally like cut off the bottom of those legs to be the right height because it'll probably cost you like five bucks and a little bit of time but it would be a good quick fix um also see I'm picturing shoulder height I don't think I can get this down that low let me brainstorm other options so this is this machine is hitting me at like boob height so that's like right below you know that's we're getting close Again, you know, pile up a book and a pillow. I don't have a nice big book candy, but that could be another option too. Try with a chair to put like a big book and then a pillow. See if that gets you close enough. If not, I just look into an inexpensive wooden bar stool that you can literally just saw the legs to the right height. Um, absolutely. And Meredith, like I said, do not hesitate to post a picture inside the Quilting Rockstars and we'll get it like real specific looking at your setup. I love it. All right, my dears, thank you so much for joining me today as we've talked about posture and ergonomics. The big thing that I want you to take away from this is that you don't have to make big expensive investments in order to improve your quilting experience. Um, those of you who have signed up for the Free Motion Quilting Launchpad, you know that one of the emails you get from me is kind of part of your like, yay, you're in. It's simply asking like, what are your roadblocks? Like, what are you scared about? What's making you nervous as you head into this Free Motion Quilting journey? And I've received emails from a lot of you talking about how you're nervous about being in pain. And I don't want you to be in pain with free motion quilting. I want you to learn um, how to set up your space to be ideal for your body and for your machine, right? Like I have a really long torso, so that means that adjusting something for me is gonna be a little bit than, uh, different than adjusting it for you if you have a very short torso, etc. A taller machine, a taller table, right? I want to help you optimize your sewing space for you and figure out the best sewing routine for you so that you can have the most pain-free, enjoyable quilting experience possible. It is not normal or, ne well, it's normal in the sense that it's common, but it is not necessary or needed to have a painful quilting experience. Quilting is something that we do for fun. It's something that we do to take our mind off things. It's something that we do to unwind. It shouldn't be something that's punishing our bodies and something that we end up dreading because we know we're gonna be hurting afterwards, okay? so. Uh, stop and take a photo and look at it, your method. I love it. Yes, yeah, so Lynn is another person. Lynn is a wonderful resource if you are here and your eyesight is worse than mine. Um, Lynn has um, a degenerative eye disease that she is registered blind, as she mentions here, and she has so many good tips for workarounds and she's always full of encouragement. And Lynn, I'm still convinced that one of these days we're going to figure out the best way for you to free motion quilts because I'm just excited to see you overcome that. Um, like I said, guys, thank you so much for being here. As I mentioned before, there is a link to a blog post with even more information, links, tips, tricks, photos, so that you can kind of look at how I position my body at the sewing machine. So there's a blog with more information for you. And if you're interested in beginning your free motion quilting journey, you're curious about free motion quilting, you want to see if you can fall in love with it, maybe you've, maybe you've heard about Free Motion Quilting Academy and you want to have a little kind of test the waters before you commit, that's going to be happening next week. It's completely free. It's here on Facebook and you can register at the link in the caption of this video. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon.